Hello, in this video I'm going to compare head-to-head -head a $1400 Sigma 135mm f1.8 lens versus a vintage 50 bucks Pentacon 135 again f2.8 lens for deep sky astrophotography. I have used both of these lenses to shoot the constellation of Cygnus and in this video I'm going to show you my findings and share with you how those images taken with these two lenses compare with each other. So buckle up, it's gonna be fun, let's get started. A while back I have made a video on my channel about vintage lenses for astrophotography and I was saying that they are a very cool way to kind of get your foot in the door, explore different kinds of astrophotography, wide field, narrow field, deep sky even, those lenses are usually very cheap because they are old and second hand, you can find them on eBay or whatever. They usually offer a pretty bright maximum aperture like f2.8, f2 or even brighter and they have a very good manual focus ring which will let you precisely focus focus on the stars at night. But the trade-off with using these lenses is of course the image quality, different kinds of aberrations and how the final image actually looks in your photo. But I was kind of vague in this previous video of mine, I just said that vintage lenses have more aberrations etc. But I didn't really show a clear-cut example, a comparison with the same focal length of a modern lens versus a vintage lens. So this is exactly what we are going to do in today's video. So contender number one, as I have mentioned, is the the Sigma 135mm lens. It has a maximum aperture of f1.8 which is a massive aperture. It really collects a ton of light for astrophotography. It has a 9 aperture blades and as you can see the front element looks really impressive and the entire lens is very well built, very well designed. It has a weather sealing gasket on the back and it also has autofocus which means that this lens could double as a portrait lens and it really actually is a very good option and it is chosen a lot by portrait photographers so it can really be a multi-purpose lens. And the contender number two is as I have mentioned in the intro a Pentacon 135mm so again the same focal length. This lens has uh, it's a very unique design because it has as much as 15 aperture blades so it really looks awesome to look into the lens when you change the aperture and the maximum aperture on this lens is f2.8. It is very well built all from metal. It doesn't have autofocus but it has a very precise manual focus ring with a very large throw so you would have no problem focusing on stars at night. This lens doesn't have a weather sealing gasket and the mount on this lens is M42 which makes it very easily adaptable to any modern camera that you might have. So in order to compare these images I have shot the constellation of Cygnus as I have mentioned. I tried to use pretty much the same framing as much as I could. I was using my Skywatcher Star Adventure and I was um, I shot a single exposure of 2 minutes and 40 seconds uh, tracked uh, same ISO which was 400 and the same aperture in order to compare you know apples to apples so I set uh, f2.8 which is the maximum on the pentagon and stopped down a little bit over one stop on the Sigma so let's jump into Lightroom and to let me show you how these differences really look like. Alright, so we are here in Lightroom and we have those two ROM images completely unedited. The first one is from the Pentacon and the second one is from the Sigma. And as you can see right off the bat, they are vastly different. I don't know if you can tell, but we have the Neb over here, we have the North American Nebula and Pelican over there, we have Seder over there and the Seder region. And as you can see, the framing is, is pretty much the same, very, very close. So let's actually open the compare view so we can see what is going on. and. Even though those two images were shot, were both shot with the same, same exact exposure settings, same shutter speed, same ISO and same aperture, the one from the Pentagon is definitely darker. If I click over there, observe what happens with the histogram. The histogram on the uh, image uh, taken with the Sigma is definitely more to the right than the histogram uh, from the image taken with the Pentagon. And I would have to bump it, I think, two-thirds of a stop in order to make it comparable. 
and right now the histogram is pretty much in the same place. So the image from the Pentagon is about two thirds of a stop darker, even though they were shot with the same aperture. And this may come as a surprise to you, but honestly, it's not surprising at all. Even if you take two modern lenses with the same aperture, same maximum aperture, they might produce images with different brightness. And that is because the f-stop doesn't take into consideration the light transmitters, transmittance coefficient or something. And that's why in cinema people use t-stops instead of f-stops. And the t-stops do take this factor into consideration. So if you want to get the same exposure using different lenses shooting a movie, you want to make sure that they have the same t-stop. So that's just a digression. Let's dive back into Lightroom. So the second thing that stands out is the vignetting. As you can see, the vignetting on the Pentagon is definitely more prominent than the vignetting on the Sigma here on the right. They Both of these images have not been calibrated at all, no profile corrections, no nothing, just a raw image open in Lightroom. And the Pentagon, of course, have more vignetting, being an older lens, etc. It's not surprising at all. But let's actually zoom in and let's see what happens with the stars. So if we zoom in uh, somewhere here, as you can see, a lot of the stars on the image from the Pentagon, most of the stars have these blue halos. There's a blue halo here, blue halo here, a ton of blue halos that really dominate the image. If we go to the left, there are a ton of these halos. And also the shape of the stars is not round at all. This is called a comatic aberration. They kind of look like comets, maybe. Uh, and this is very prominent in this image versus on the Sigma, the stars are pretty much perfectly round. As you can see, the nap here is perfectly round. And even in the corners, there is no visible chromatic aberration, no astigmatism, pretty much nothing here in these images. And there are also no halos, at least no noticeable halos, maybe apart from, from a super bright Deneb and super bright Seder over there, which is again to be expected. So the quality of the stars is strikingly different. The quality of stars on the image taken with the Sigma is, you know, orders of magnitudes better than the, than the quality of stars taken with a vintage Pentagon lens. Okay, so I actually tried to edit these two images uh, the best that I could. I have taken them to Pixinsight then into Photoshop to try to pull out as much nebulosity and reduce stars in order to make them as nice as possible. So let's see the comparison between the final images taken with these two lenses. So there we go. Here is the final image that I have been able to get from the, from the RAW taken with the Sigma lens. And here is the one that I have been able to pull out from the image taken with the Pentagon. So again, let's open the Let's open the comparison and right now again the pentagon is here on the left and the sigma is on the right and uh, the blue halos on the stars are so prominent on the image taken with the pentagon. I didn't really try to somehow remove them in Photoshop. I did pretty much the same editing steps as I have done to the image taken with the sigma. And definitely if you if you look at them sort of in, in, in full scale, not zoomed in, uh, you can see that the, those blue halos really dominate the image. And also the, the nebula, the North American nebula and the Seder region is less visible here in this image. And obviously if we, if we zoom in, you can really start to see the problems here. Th those blue halos, the chromatic aberration and also the quality of the nebula. Here on the image uh, taken with the Sigma, as you can see, it is way, way cleaner. We can definitely see the Pelican Nebula here, which we hardly can on the image from the Pentagon. And the quality of stars is really superb, I would say. So there we have it. Here you, is your direct comparison. I know at least one of my followers have requested a video about the, the Pentagon 135. And this is pretty much what you can get. And uh, it really shows that if you pay more, you get more, you get better image quality. But to be fair, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be fair not to mention a, uh, Another very excellent option in the 135 millimeters focal length, which is very well respected by astrophotographers and it is over twice as cheap as the Sigma. And I'm of course talking about the famous Samyang or Rokinon 135 f2. This lens is only a hair darker than the Sigma. The Sigma is again f1.8 and the Samyang is f2. 
And the Samyang also produces very nice uh, images and very, very, very well represented stars. It doesn't have a lot of those aberrations. So this is also a very good option, but of course it doesn't have autofocus and, and, and that kind of thing. So the Sigma is, you know, it, the price of the Sigma, I think is justified by how well this lens really works in different scenarios. And right now, if you want to see how I actually process my images in PixInsight and Photoshop, how I'm able to pull out a lot of detail with, with little data, you can definitely check out this video where I explain uh, all these steps that are involved here. If you like this video, consider giving, giving it a like. I would really appreciate it. And also consider subscribing to my channel. I will be posting a lot more astrophotography content in the future. Until next time, clear skies and bye-bye.